berberine is getting more and more attention as the next miracle supplement. Many promote it for its cardiovascular and metabolic benefits, especially in people with diabetes, heart disease, and high cholesterol. And some take it for its anti-inflammatory effects or as an immune boost that helps fight viral or parasitic infections. Well, in this video, I'll tell you which of these claimed benefits actually have any evidence to support them. I will also talk to you about who should, and more importantly, who should not be taking berberine and go over a safety profile. Hi, I'm Dr. Leonid Kim, and on this channel, I discuss the most up-to-date and evidence-based information on the topics of metabolic health, weight loss, and longevity. Let's get into it. Berberine is an alkaloid derivative that can be isolated from many kinds of medicinal plants. It's been used in traditional Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years with uses ranging from diarrhea to type 2 diabetes and even in the treatment of certain types of cancers. Animal studies have shown additional benefits with weight loss, improvement of gut health and inflammation, as well as in the treatment of fatty liver and heart failure. One of the most studied effects of berberine is its effect on glucose metabolism and cholesterol. A meta-analysis of 27 randomized controlled clinical trials that included over 2,500 patients show that berberine has effects on diabetes type 2 that is comparable to other therapeutic regimens. More specifically, one study of 36 adults with newly diagnosed diabetes compared the effects of berberine versus metformin and found that berberine reduced hemoglobin A1c by 2 percentage points, which was similar to the change seen in the metformin group. In fact, compared to metformin, berberine exhibited an identical effect of fasting blood glucose levels as well as in fasting and postprandial insulin levels. And when it came to cholesterol, the berberine group showed a significantly lower levels of triglycerides when compared to metformin. A subsequent study of 97 patients with diabetes found that berberine lowered fasting blood glucose by 28% which was similar to the effects seen in the subgroup treated with metformin or another diabetes medication called rosiglitazone, brand name Avandia. This study also noted a decrease in insulin levels in patients treated with berberine, suggesting an improvement in insulin sensitivity. Now, when it comes to cholesterol, berberine also seems to be quite beneficial in treating lipid disorders. There was a small but a randomized placebo-controlled double-blinded study of 106 subjects with type 2 diabetes and dyslipidemia and found that the treatment of berberine for 12 weeks not only improved blood glucose levels and triglyceride levels, but it also lowered LDL levels by 21%. And this finding falls in line with an older study published in Nature that found berberine to decrease LDL by 25%. And there was an interesting study published in Metabolism that performed a head-to-head -head comparison between berberine and simvastatin, a common statin medication. And what they found was the group that was treated with berberine had a much better LDL reduction compared to the simvastatin group. And on top of that, the combination therapy of simvastatin plus berberine gave an even greater reduction in LDL at a whopping 31%. Lastly, there are recent animal studies that highlight berberine having a weak activity against inhibiting PCSK9, which is an enzyme that is a target of a newer class of cholesterol medications like evolocumab, brand name Repathin. Other studies know berberine modulating your microbiome, which in turn promotes your metabolic health by increasing GLP-1 hormone, which is the basis of the insanely popular weight loss and diabetes drugs like Ozempic and Manjaro. Now, let's discuss who should and should not be taking the supplement. Is this a good supplement to take for someone who has diabetes or cholesterol problems? Well, despite all the impressive studies we went over, those studies are still tiny compared to studies published on most diabetes and cholesterol medications. So I personally would still favor common medications like metformin or a statin over berberine. The number of people studied taking these prescription medications just dwarfed the small studies that looked into berberine. And the formulation of the prescription drugs is also highly regulated, unlike what you see in the supplement industry where it's often hard to know for sure if the product you're buying has the right therapeutic dose 
and actually contains the medicinal components advertised. But if you are, for whatever reason, are not able to take common oral diabetes medications or statins, it may be worth it to talk to your doctor to see if berberine can be added to your treatment regimen. Just be aware that there's still not a whole lot of information on what interactions berberine has with other medications. So your doctor may be more comfortable recommending berberine if you do not have any major comorbidities or if that's the only medication you'll be taking. However, given the limited drug interaction data available, I personally would not recommend it to someone who takes more than three or four drugs or supplements, especially ones that require close monitoring, like blood thinners or cardiac medications. Lastly, if you are taking berberine, let me know which brand of the supplement you prefer and why. Is there a brand that you trust more than others? I hope this review was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.